So the new satisfactory update added in a lot of new stuff, including the most powerful Hyper 2 booster ever conceived. Like, I, I'm not even joking. <laughs> Things are going crazy. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where update 3.5, the fluid update, is out and oh man oh man. We got a lot to do now, brother. But first, remember to leave a like. And I'm sure most of you guys know what's happening with the new update, but just to recap for those who might not, there's a new packager machine which packs and unpacks fluids. The refinery got a new remodel, that looks amazing. And then the big gohona is that there are Mark II pipes, Mark II pumps, and valves in the game now. Go figure, the fluid update updated pipe mechanics. What amazing stuff! And there's actually a whole lot more, but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Because first, we really just gotta talk about the pipes and what the heck we're gonna do. So, earlier this month, I finished up our nuclear project here, which makes us 420,000 megawatts, and took me literally a month to pipe together and all this jazz. And now, <laughs> we have the Mark II pipe which can carry twice the amount of liquid as the Mark 1s. Meaning we can just delete half of this. Uh-huh. Now, will we do that? Well, jury's still out. I am not sure. It would be a undertaking to say the least. But, it would help with our leg issue a little bit, which is becoming a bit of a problem. And, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe one week if I have some time. I will upgrade everything. But for now, we're gonna leave it. The only thing I do wanna do is I need to fix the uh, pumps pretty much throughout my entire world. Because a really cool thing with pipes and the pumps now is there's this nice quality of life feature where you can see the head lift of pumps. So for example, if you have a Mark I uh, pump, let's just go down here. You can see when you have it in a direction, oh my gosh, there you go. You can see that little blue line that goes out. That's how far the head lift will reach. And when you hit a wall with one of these, you'll see where the end of the head lift is as well. So right over here, you can clearly see that it's hitting the next uh, pump, so that's all good. And what's going on here? What has happened? Is this, wait, it's still working. Oh my God, and the head lift's broken. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on here. They may have shrunk the models for the pumps. But yeah, now that setting up pumps is so easy now, I'm probably gonna redo most of our pump towers in the world. A, because for the most part, I, just, I was just counting wall segments to see if it was the right height, and B, it looks really weird with all of the pipes disconnected like this. Like, it still works, but it's like, bruh, you know? So yeah, that's gonna be a big project. I'll get to that later though, because there's just so much to go over. Main one being the absolute insanity that will be oil from now on. Because now that we have pipes with twice the capacity, that effectively doubles all of the oil in the entire world. Like, I haven't done the math on it, but it's near as common as copper now, I'm pretty sure. Because, yeah, you just overclock the extractors, throw in your power shards, and they can produce up to 600 per minute if you have a pure node, and I'm sure we do, right? Okay, there we go. But yeah, this is what I mean. We can double these and get 600 crude oil per minute out of them. Like, dude, that is going to be wild. We can almost double Petropolis, that means. Well, if we did have more pure nodes, we only have, I think, the two. So that's still okay. We're still getting like 50% more oil out of this area, meaning, we can increase the production of this area by 50%. Uh -huh, uh huh So we're making like, I don't know, 2,700 rubber per minute here. And now with this update, we should be able to make over 4,000 rubber. And that will pretty much cover our rubber needs for like the rest of the game. Right, Mr. Duck? Right. Of course though, there's a small caveat to all that because that means we're going to have to power shard every refinery in Petropolis here. Every single one. And there's almost 400 of them. So that means, goodness gracious, 
We have to increase each one by 50%. I think that's one power shard then for each. That's just like 400 power shards. Oh yeah, plus all the power shards we're gonna want for the nuclear area water extractors so we can cut down on them. Yeah, okay, so we need effectively thousands of power shards. Well, you can only find power slugs throughout the map, like in super hidden locations, like right over there. And you know, hunting for power slugs is, is not too bad because you can get like a beep booper here and you can have it scan for them. So we just run around with this for, I don't know, hundreds of hours and collect every single power slug on the map. That's one option. Or option two is we can have our friends help us out. Because although we have been quite cruel to nature, there has been one being that is still being kind. The doggos. Do you remember me? He doesn't remember me. Don't worry, I have a bribe. Come to me, friend. Come to me, let's be friends again. We had a great working relationship. Because you see here, the doggos, once you tame them, can sometimes find you power slugs. And I forget the exact ratio for how often they find them, but it's, it's good enough, right? And regardless, even if it was 1% like every 20 minutes, you are generating power slugs from thin air with these effectively. Like they don't go out into the map, they just spawn in its inventory. So, infinite power slugs. You just need infinite doggos. So as we go through things today, I'm gonna be looking around for all the doggos I can possibly find, and we're gonna get all of the power slugs we can find as well. Right, Mr. Bean? Right. But once we get enough doggos, we'll put them somewhere in our base, we'll make them a nice play place, and it'll be the happiest time in the world. And the first doggos we're gonna get are over here in the northern oil fields. So like right up here, there's like, jeez, 10 doggos or something like that? I don't know. I guess this place was kind of nice before <laughs> I came along. There are a lot of doggos, and we'll try and bring them home. So doggos. Okay, weird, hello. Welcome back from your trans-dimensional trip. You wanna be best friends, hmm? Hmm? Then come to me. Join the dark side, and together we will destroy the world. <laughs> you too, Bombardier. You can be my best friend as well. There's room in my base for every doggo. Good, good, good. Now your brother, Timothy. Yes, don't want to leave out your dearest brother Timothy, right? Right. Come to me, friend. Good boy. All right. So, yeah, this will just take like 93,000 years, but we'll get all the power shards we need, right? So, totally worth. In the meantime, since there are a lot of places we have to go, and there's actually a bit of infrastructure I have to set up for them, we're just gonna make them a nice little dog pen for the time being. And all of the doggos from the beach that I can find will hang out here until I'm ready to bring them back to base. And don't worry, doggos, you'll get to live in luxury as well. Look at those windows, right? Amazing. Find anything? No? Classic. I think the doggos find stuff like every 20 minutes or something like that. And yeah, there's like a small chance for it to be a power slug or it's just gonna be some garbage. So for the most part, they're just gonna be hanging out and about. And for now, I'll gather up the rest of the doggos on the beach, and then we gotta head back to Beast. There's a few other things we need to unlock and do with update three before we start rocking and rolling some more. And man, these transdimensional doggos are kind of freaking me out. So we'll get back to the doggos in a little bit here, but first we need to unlock a new alternate recipe because I missed this in the update. But guess what? They added two new ones. So, we only have one of these bad boys right now, but we'll find another one soon. For now, I just wanna see what's up with them. So leave that for 10 minutes, and while that is cooking, we need to unlock the ladders. And the ladders you get from the awesome shop. How much do you want, great shop? Four tickets? Is that easily done? How many tickets do we have? Just one, huh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. While I was building our nuclear power plant, most of the nuclear fuel rods were going into the awesome sink. So how many did we get? A lot. 
Oh my gosh, 127. And now each ticket costs 13 million points to get. That's gonna be a lot of turbo motors. But for now, we'll take what we've earned. Thank you very much. Do our little bit of shopping and be happy with our new toy. Neat. Now we have ladders. Are they in the organization tab? You better believe it. Cool. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the ladders. I know they stop fall damage. So like, say you're falling from pretty much any height and you land on a ladder, you will take no damage. So they're cool for that, but we're pretty set up around our base, especially with our jetpack and new jelly. So I don't know. We'll mess with that in the future. But for now, let's see those new alternate recipes and then we'll get all those doggos. Oh, and that makes sense. Of course they're gonna be for canisters. Cool, so now we have two new alternates for casters, steel casters and coated iron casters, which is iron plates and copper sheets to four, or you could have three steel to two canisters, aha. Uh -huh. Well, this is only 40 per minute and this is 60 per minute, so I don't think I'd ever mess with this one. Like. The packing rate of fluid packers is 60 per minute. So when you're making them at 40, they take 60, bad time. This one though, 60 per minute, that's good. And it uses just iron and copper sheets. That's really good early game. Like when you're just getting started with plastic and stuff and you don't have like crazy oil production setups, yeah, you don't really want to use your limited amount of plastic on that. So yeah, again, like it, it's a good early game thing. And this one's kind of like hot garbage. So we'll get that one. Cool. And those are the only other two alternate recipes added. So we don't really need another hard drive yet. Anyway, I got some work to do here. Let's get back to those doggos and getting them back to base. How, wait, how are we gonna do that? The doggos have to be close to our storage room so we can always check on them. Uh-huh. So I guess I'll just make like some kind of giant ramp over here. Sure. And then that's how we'll get them inside. But then where will we go? Our base is pretty packed, at least on this floor. And I would really prefer the doggos to be on this floor. Because over to our right and our left, we have our hyper tube hubs. If we go behind here, this is all of our basic processing. So like our storage room right now, it runs off of like impure nodes and just like random overflow things. And we have all that kind of garbage all set up over here. And back here as well. So not a lot of space. Even less space. Again, it's a, an absolute mess. And then on the other side, if we can survive the leg, it's kind of the same scenario. Huh. So yeah, we might be kind of screwed here. Oh! Or not! What's this? This is perfect, where is this? That's my power, the power fuse box. Uh-oh, uh-oh, game, don't die. Please. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the power fuse box. We've got processing all over the place. We have balconies here. This is literally like, wait, did I set this up in the past for doggos? I might have. Past Kibbs is a pretty smart lad. Cool. Then I'm gonna get to setting up some infrastructure as well then. Oh, and then after the doggos, we have to do a lot of testing, I forgot to mention. Dude, there's been some crazy discoveries with the new bounce pads, and I wanna check them out. But first, doggos. So, I made this huge ramp just in front of our base to get the doggos inside. And once we get a, I don't know, 10, 15 doggos in, we'll call it a day and delete this whole ramp again. But man, I just wanted to quickly point out how cool the base looks. You know, just, we've done pretty well here. We've done pretty well. I'm really excited to start finally building like the top portion where we can make our supercomputers and everything. Dude, it's gonna be the best. But first, my dudes. You ready to rock and roll? Ready to party? Any parting gifts? Garbage, garbage, garbage. Oh, come on, one of you guys definitely has to have a power slug, right? Cool, nice. <laughs> there we go. Let's get you back to base now. We have a long journey ahead of us and it will be very dangerous. But don't worry. I will be your sword and I will be your shield. <laughs> Nothing will harm you, my precious. While we walk, you know, why don't we talk at the same time here, eh? 
Cause like the other day, I did that feast cam video and I never really like addressed that. In fact, I don't really address all too much. I never am very like direct with you guys. Usually on live streams, I like talk to my audience like a lot more, but on YouTube here, it's more so just sharing the journey of like our factory and stuff like that. Kind of impersonal. So it's <laughs> judging by the comments of the feast cam video, A, not a lot of you follow me on Twitch, Definitely follow me on Twitch. I'm live every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. And B, it's kind of like a wake-up call for me. It's like, hey, I don't really like talk to you guys enough, I guess. So yeah, like now and into the future, I'll try and be a little bit more communicative or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Talk to you about my cooking stories. <laughs> no, it's actually a disaster. <laughs> I, I just moved out like this last year and I pretty much knew nothing about cooking. Oh my gosh. And so this last year has been literally fire and brimstone. <laughs> but it's been fun. I have a lot of stories to share about that, which I usually do over on Twitch. But yeah, it's kind of hard to talk about all that fun stuff when I'm so focused on like the video game here and trying to save doggos and all that jazz. So maybe we'll bring in like new series or something like that. Or maybe, I don't know, like unlisted like vlog videos that I can post in the community tab or maybe a Discord. I don't know. So yeah, I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments below. Okay, but thank you for coming to my TED talk, but now all the doggos are inside. I made them a nice little pen here with the green floor and a bin for when they, you know, spam me with nuclear waste. It can be sent out. <laughs> and a couple little toys and things to play with as well. So we can always hang out and they can always bring me power slugs, right gentlemen? Right. We have about 15 doggos by the way, so we're gonna be getting power slugs out the wazoo eventually. However though, we are gonna be switching gears here now because update 3.5 has just released and we have a lot of testing that we could be doing right now. So we're gonna jump over to a creative world I've made and I'll give these doggos some time to find some power slugs for us, right guys? Right. And oh man, oh man, there is some crazy stuff going on in this game, specifically with these bounce pads. They are broken. For example, watch this! Wow. Amazing! Look at that! You hit the bounce pad and into the hypa tube, and you'd think it would launch you like 50 million like kilometers per hour like a hypa tube booster, but eh, not really champ. However, if you do something a little bit different, well maybe it does. Behold, the other bounce pad! New and improved! 10,000 million times better! <laughs> that wasn't even an exaggeration. Let's turn the fog off. Yeah, the bounce pads, they mean a lot of fun. Yeah, they got some pretty interesting properties. So what the heck is going on here then? Why does one bounce pad just poop us out and the other literally send us to the other side of the world? Hmm? What's going on here? Well, it's a weird thing with jump pads now because they used to just launch you at like a consistent rate. Like you build one, it launch you from A to B. But now, you see this arc here? The jump pad will boost you based on how big the arc is and how much power it needs to make you go through that arc. So if like the bounce pad is something crazy like this, it will literally be more powerful to make you go that high and that far. Which is pretty cool, eh? But this can be manipulated in some degrees. For example, say we had a wall over here, right? And then we built a bounce pad. So, put that bad boy up, screwed her on down, and check that out. If it goes over the wall, it has to boost faster, but if it determines it hits the wall, it won't boost you as fast. So just put that down on the ground here, and I'll show you what's up. Give it a second to get ready, and there you go. That was actually really fast. Let me set up a better example, where we have one bounce pad built with a wall literally right in front of it, and another bounce pad free to the wind. Then if we just get rid of the wall in front of the bounce pad, well guess what, now this one just kind of bonks you, whereas the other one sends you going, gets you moving, gets you grooving, really, 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 really fast. So that's really awesome when you're building hypotubes because if you build the bounce pad first, 
and then you build the hyper tube, you can get this insane hyper tube cannon. And you can see it visually too. I can see this one, it's trying to get you to bounce you over here. And this one is just trying to bounce you right to there. Which is nifty. Pretty neat arena. Pretty easy way to get around the entire map considering these bounce pads only cost five megawatts of power. And that's after a couple charges too. Like, they don't even use a charge every time you use them. I'm not sure how those mechanics work, but it's something like that. And yeah, Hyper 2 boosters are gone. Gone forever. Well, that's actually kind of what like most people are hoping, but no. Devs see this as a glitch for some reason, and it will be fixed soon.tm. So have fun with it while you can. And also, it's pretty bugged out too. So as you can see, like the blue line here goes all the way out to here. But after a quick reload, the bounce pads update, and now they're all weak. So sad. So I guess this trick would only be really good in like speed runs or something like that if you just want to meme around for a day. But yeah, the distance is reset now since we restarted our game and it's reset all over the place. However though, those are all transport methods and you know what? I think once this experimental branch goes to the main game, we won't need to worry about any traveling. We'll teleport with these bounce pad zippers. So you can put the bounce pads on walls and stuff. So if you have a bounce pad on a wall aimed towards another bounce pad, so you land right in front of it, you'll just be zipped back and forth constantly to wherever you wanna be. And I assume this will go so fast that it'll be like teleporting. Now, when you reset your game a couple times, this might break, not sure, but let's find out. Okay. So it's not bad, it's not bad. We moved like, I don't know, 30 blocks in a blink of an eye. And it could be faster if I optimize this, or again, once the bounce pads are brought to the main branch, because I, I think there's a few other bugs going on with them. I'm not sure, I'm not a game designer here. I just see speed and I go fast. And if you set one of these up properly, that went into a hyper tube, effectively, You've just made yourself another Hyper 2 booster. And these could just be built anywhere. And I doubt this will be fixed like the other stuff. Because with the other Hyper 2 booster, the distance was getting reset. That was the big meme. However, with these, the distance is still fixed and you get perpetually more speed from going from booster to booster. So I think this will stay. I hope it will stay. That would be amazing. So you just have a little zipper, probably about half the size of this, go into a hyper tube and boop, away you go. Energy efficient hyper tube booster. Just a little inconvenient. Oh, and just one other cool thing with bounce pads though, but since all vehicles bounce off of them, you can really easily make bounce pad elevators for your vehicles and have double decker truck highways, which will be super, super nice. If they work properly, there we go, yeah. The old size of the bounce pads was really, really cumbersome to work with ramps and stuff. So with the new size, truck highways and truck bounce pads are easy to set up. And when and if we do future playthroughs, I definitely want to utilize this a lot more. And also it'd be nice to have big highways going all over the place because you can put uh, pipelines on the underside of foundations. So you could have all your trucks running up top and all the pipelines running underneath. And maybe, in some crazy distant future, we could do the same thing with belts. <laughs> but we'll see. I'm happy enough with this, to be honest. A, for the convenience, and B, you can just do some really fun decorations with it. Looks nice. However, though, I have a lot of stuff I need to upgrade in my world and tweak, so that is gonna be all for today. So I hope you all enjoyed, and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day. And bye-bye.